we are in Clearwater, British Columbia, visiting Brett Turcott with Blair Morgan Racing. First, let's go to Monty and Fernie and see what's going on with Prestige Tours. Well, basically my dad's been uh, snowmobiling around here since he was a little boy. So he's probably got 35 to 40 years of snowmobiling experience in this area under his belt. So he he knows the area inside and out. I've been snowmobiling around here for 18 years, so I know the, the area around here inside and out as well. Um, well, we've been in business for about six six years now. I think this is our sixth season. Um, basically, the reason we started this outfit was because um, I, I'm fairly young, but we've been enjoying this our whole life. And that really helps when you're on a tour to interpret different things on the tour, such as old growth forests, um, the old Fernie fire in 1904, that sort of thing. And we think it's uh, a good reason to show people what, what there really is around for um, Basically, we really get to sled a lot of these beautiful mountain ranges um, that you see here. Um, you got these three mountain ranges over here after about you know, end of February, it's uh, all sunny, sunshine, and, and uh, it's just like having white sand on a on a beach in Florida, basically. It's so hot. You don't need to have previous snowmobile experience to come on a tour with Prestige Tours because um, basically we custom designed the tour to fit the rider's ability and needs. Um, all our trails are machine groomed trails, they're roads, they're not, um, they're not extreme tours by any means if you're not into that, however if you are into more of the advanced riding, we have tours that are custom fit to those as well. With our outfit, we'll pick you up right in Calgary and uh, drive you to Fernie, which is about two and a half hours south. And um, yeah, we provide the snowmobiles, the accommodation, the gear, everything you need. All you need is a suitcase full of clothes and come on out and we'll take care of you definitely. We're back with more sled trails. Clearwater, British Columbia. Let's go for a rip up in the mountains with the boys from Snow Drifters. Our club here, we've got seven cabins on five different mountains, and it's a fairly big area that we cover, like probably 60 miles. Uh, we've got everything right from beginners, um, uh, like meadows, right to extreme stuff, uh, to 9,000 feet. This year will be our 37th year. 
um, and we're we're holding the AGM for the BC Snowmobile Federation this spring in Clearwater. So it's a 40th year for them and also 37 years for us. Event for the season and everyone comes and tests tunes at our race and, and we just build camaraderie um, at our event more than some of the others just due to we're, we're having fun than anything else. So it's going to be a fairly big uh, uh, deal here and it's uh, March 4, 5 and 6. Anybody can join. Right now we're in West Craft on the face and we're going to the back to our cabin to get everybody together and kind of go over to the Sugar Bowl. In the Sugar Bowl we're going to go to East Craft Cabin. It should be a great day. It's going to clear off time. Snow Drifters is only an hour and a half from a major city of Kamloops and then from downtown it's only what you've seen today is 10 minutes to unload and then you come up to from 2,000 to 6,000 feet and you've just got a winter wonderland up here. So we're back at it with more sled trails. Just came down from 8,500 feet at Raft Mountain in Clearwater, BC with the boys from Snow Drifters. Let's get some safety tips from the Canadian Avalanche Association. Hi, I'm John Kelly with the Canadian Avalanche Centre in Revelstoke and I'm a public avalanche forecaster. We're going to be looking at uh, a couple of uh, key pieces of safety equipment. Uh, and one of the main pieces is an avalanche beacon. And we're going to look at a couple of different models, a digital and analog beacon, and uh, have some uh, ideas of how they work. Um, digital beacons uh, tend to have a, a readout of uh, distance and direction that will sort of point you towards the, uh, uh, the, the a buried beacon and an analog beacon usually works by uh, beeps and sound and people uh, have gotten comfortable with one or the other method over the years and uh, there's, there's no really better or worse one, it's just whatever you end up being more comfortable with. The proper place to wear your beacon is strapped right on your body and the reason for this is in case you do get tumbled in an avalanche, the forces of the avalanche can be huge and it can rip uh, clothes off your body. Uh, you want to make sure that when you do come to rest, your beacon is still attached. So mine, you can see it's attached with two straps uh, and, and firmly, nice and snugly on my body. Of course, a uh, beacon is only one of the pieces of equipment you need. Uh, in order to be able to find someone who's buried under the snow, you're going to need uh, two other key pieces of equipment. This one's a probe. a quick snap together device and then now I have an ability to probe underneath the snow so that when I get close to the beacon I can find uh, somebody buried and your shovel avalanche shovel and these are the three pieces that you must have together to, to find anybody in an avalanche Thanks for tuning in to Sled Trails. We're going to go over to the backcountry with Brett and check out this super sick private test facility. Let's make our way back in the shop for a little tech tip with Brett's dad, Rocky. I'd say basically how I got started with snowmobiling is Got in too much injuries with the dirt bikes and kind of stayed low during the summers and rode snowmobiles in the winter. Went to the season opener in Rouen and around Quebec and a little bit nervous coming to the new circuit, new kid on the block. Everyone's looking at you like, where are you from and uh, what are you doing out here? So 
um, went out there and dominated the semi-pro stuff. So I was really happy with that. Went into the next week in Sault Ste. Marie with a lot of confidence. And uh, the manager came up and he's like, well, we're looking to build a team. So he gave me his card and I sent a resume to him the next summer. And just got the call in the fall. He's like, yeah, you're up. And I saw the empty shoes. Yeah, definitely uh, Blair Morgan Racing Team stepped in this year super big and uh, as well as Armstrong Speed Sports for the CSRA Nationals. Um, I have two practice sleds here at home and I have two race sleds out east. Um, on the practice track I just ride either my 440 or my mod and uh, I go back east and it's a bit of a difference but uh, the sleds are relatively the same and I can just hop on and be at home again. With being the younger and having a little bit younger body, it kind of helps me a bit, but uh, I definitely get muscled around out there. Uh, that's why I've been working really hard this year. Uh, finding now that I can start to muscle the sled around a lot better, and as my years go on, I'll just be able to do it that much better. Yeah, there's a lot of sacrifice. Um, I spent my summer with my head down doing English 11 online, so. It freed up time for the snowcross and uh, it was difficult, you know. I think it just might be your size. Yeah, my dad, uh, the mechanic, he's been helping me out a lot and uh, gets my sleds coming out of the hole really fast. And uh, the sleds are super fast this year. The new SC4 suspension, they really weight transfer. Able to go faster with the pumps with them too. They don't uh, kick in the back end as much as last year. but. That's definitely made me a lot faster too. Yeah, Noah Baker actually um, was the reason that we went out to post year when I got noticed. So uh, he definitely helped me along the way too. I have my moments out on the track and I got friends out on the track too. So I know that I can race with them competitively and then I have the security that they won't take me out in a corner or land on me over a jump. Yeah, and definitely I'd like to thank all the sponsors for all that they've done and especially uh, Armstrong Speed Sports and the Blair Morgan Racing Team helped me so much this year. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do this this year. Um, our circuit folded and um, the sponsors stepped up to that. So, uh, without them, this wouldn't be happening. We're going to be heading out to New York February 26th and 27th. We'll be doing a doubleheader WSA National. and. Uh, it's a good chance for me to race on the WSA circuit, all the fast American guys there. And then I can see where I'm at too, coming from the CSRA. Yeah, there's a few, you know, I'd like to get in as many WSAs as I can. Uh, once again, budget is a big thing too. But I hope to get in down to, into some X Games qualifiers this spring and hopefully qualify for the X Games Snowcross next year. There's some local guys that I used to race against that have been there. So I know it's possible and I'm going to work my hardest to get there. <laughs> yeah, definitely get my driver's license February 15th. So uh, got to work hard for that too. Got to learn how to parallel park. That's the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah, you guys better watch it. I've been working my ass off. So uh, no, I can't use that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rocky Turcott from Clearwater Bridge, Columbia. Father Brett Turcott, uh, been his mechanic for the last three years. Uh, have raced and mechanic for 25 years. I'm going to go through the uh, tech tip uh, to make it easier for you to change your belts. Um, first of all, <clears throat> bring your toolkit out and uh, remove your clutch cover. And in your toolkit will be, uh, I call it a wing nut that is made to widen the secondary shiv, allowing you to pull the belt off over the secondary clutch. Once you get that far, you can take and just slide it over top and slide it out and you're ready to replace it with a new one or clean it up and your clutch is up and uh, install it again. Myself, personally, I always Make it so that you can read the number when you go to install it. So you go back, step it through, slide it over top the secondary clutch, you do your wing nut. Make sure 
that you don't lose this wing nut because you, it's very hard to change the belt without it. So you put that back in your kit and then work your, your belt to get your it in the top of the shiv again. You're ready to then to install your clutch cover. And now you're set for the rest of the weekend of riding. At Sled Trails, we're always looking for good video. The guys at CMSA Racing in Minnesota sent us some deadly footage, followed by Tahoe Films' new DVD, Extreme Velocity, next. Roger Jones, one of the most inspirational people I've ever met. Nothing mine, holds him back. January 22nd, 1992, I, I was in a truck driving accident. Also caused me to lose both my legs. It's not really as bad as it looks. I get to do all the same stuff basically I ever did before. I, I snowmobile and four wheel. I go hunting and fishing and everything that I always liked to do before. I really, you know, I have a passion for sledding because it's just, it's freedom. I get to go to the places that are just probably some of the most beautiful places in the world and, and enjoy them. The sled gets me there easily, usually, and sometimes with a lot of challenges, though.
Upon our return, we discovered a country like nothing we had ever seen before. Soaring vertical peaks, glaciers hanging on the sides of mountains. It was incredible. It also was quite deadly. I'm Chris, fly for Soccer Mountain, driving a helicopter today. Been flying about six years. Banana, for the ride. Then go find a glacier. It had been almost two months since our last attempt. It was now full summer. Everything was green. There wasn't much snow, except for on the tops of the mountains. And there she sat, the glacier just below, 1,000 vertical feet. The cliff was too steep to land the helicopter. Gear and crew had to drop from a hover. Bernie's got me on a string, a tight rope. I'm following his tracks. Here's the rock drop. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,000. Five seconds. I think we need to look at, we need to go right up here and look off from there. Beautiful enough for where I can go to jump off and having a lot of second thoughts. And then Bernie's looking out to the west and thinking that we got a little bit of a storm coming. Um, so I, anyway. What? Go have some fun. You want us to get up in the chopper? You're gonna give us a thumbs up and then we'll go. Okay. All right, you ready? Any hey, last will and testament? Rock on. Thanks to my family for letting me do this. We'd like to thank the Turcotte family, of course our friends at Snowdrifters, for an absolutely incredible time here in Clearwater, British Columbia. Come and check it out. Sled Trails is sponsored by Shell Canada Products, Smith Optics, and HMK Snowmobiling. Look us up online, key search word, sled trails.